When you hear people talking about acetabular fractures, have you ever wondered what the terms anterior column, posterior column, or even the Jude view mean? Not to worry. Not only will this video explain what the terms mean, but also help you understand how to identify different types of acetabular fractures on imaging scans as well. The purpose of this video aims to explain the core concepts related to the acetabulum and its fractures, as well as to help you understand how to identify different parts of the acetabulum on x-rays. It is purely educational and should not be interpreted as medical advice. The following concepts may be confusing if you are encountering them for the first time, so feel free to check out the timestamps placed in the timeline of the video or in the description if you want to recap specific parts of the video. Enjoy the video. So we're looking at the pelvis here with both of the pelvic bones on either side, the sacrum at the back, as well as both of the femurs. Now let me first isolate the left pelvic bone in order to explain its structure. Here we have the left pelvic bone just on itself. This is looking at it from the anterior view. This is the medial view, the posterior view, and finally the lateral view. Although the pelvic bone looks like it is one piece of bone, Embryologically, it is actually composed of three separate bones. The first one being the ilium, which is the large superior piece of bone. Next is the pubic bone, which is inferior and anterior. And then the ischium, which is posterior and inferior. So they are actually three separate bones that are joined by cartilage and eventually fused to form this pelvic bone. The acetabulum is this cup-shaped concavity which is lined by this cartilage and helps form the hip joint to allow the articulation with the proximal femur, like this. And it is this cup-shaped acetabulum that helps form the bone socket joint that is the hip. Though anatomically the pelvic bone is divided into th these three separate parts, in terms of the clinical relevance, a different classification is used in the management of acetabular fractures in orthopedics. There are 10 well-known patterns or different types of acetabular fractures, five of which are referred to as the elementary patterns and another five referred to as the associated patterns. These 10 fracture patterns are part of the Letournel and Jude classification for acetabular fractures and is based on the column principle. The column principle states that there are two main columns and the acetabulum, which can be used to classify different types of fracture patterns. The anterior column is composed of the lower and anterior pubic bone, as well as a portion of the larger iliac bone at the top, which is shown to be this piece that is moving right now. The posterior column is basically the ischium, which is this piece right here. The reason why acetabular fractures are classified according to these columns because fractures associated with these different columns will have their own distinct surgical management plans as well as operative approaches. Other than the anterior and posterior column, there is also the anterior wall. The anterior wall is just the anterior part of this cup shape that forms the acetabulum shown here. And there is also the posterior wall of the acetabulum which is this piece here. So the, both the anterior and posterior wall help form this concavity to create the socket for the proximal femoral head. The last of the elementary fracture patterns is the transverse pattern, which is basically both the pubic bone and the ischium, as shown here. Understanding how to identify these five elementary patterns is most important because the five associated patterns are just different combinations of the five elementary patterns. Before I go on to explain how to identify fractures in these different parts on an x-ray, let me first reiterate the basic principle of looking for fractures on x-rays. If I go into the x-ray view, the most important and useful way to look for fractures, especially for acetabular fractures, is to learn how to identify important and normal anatomical lines. If I use the femur as an example for a fracture, and in this case there will be a middle fragment that is loose here, if we draw a line that is lining the medial edge of the femur, which is usually smooth in a normal femur, if there happens to be a fracture in the femur causing a fragment to either be displaced medially or laterally, that's used medially, we can see that this line is disrupted by this fracture. Rather than seeing a smooth line, the fracture would actually show a jagged line because of the displaced piece. So now let's go on to looking at some of the x-rays to try identify fractures in different parts of the acetabulum. The first important view for pelvic x-rays is the AP view. There are a few lines, just like the one demonstrated earlier, that are important and should be drawn in order to identify fractures in specific areas. 
The first is the iliopectineal line, which starts from the SI joint along the medial edge of the iliac crest, as well as the pubic bone, and ends at the pubic symphysis. So in order to remember which bone this line is referring to, let me remove all the other bones in this view that are not covered by this line. And when I go back into a normal view, we can see that this line is actually representing the medial edge of the anterior column. So remember that the iliopectineal line is referring to the medial edge of the anterior column. The next important line is the ilioischial line, which also starts on the SI joint, going along the medial side of the iliac bone, but also inferiorly along this surface, down all the way to the medial end of the ischium. Hiding all the irrelevant parts of the structure, we can see that this line drawn here is actually representing the medial edge of the posterior column, which is this bone here. The next two lines are used to delineate the anterior and posterior wall of the acetabulum. We can see that there are two lines here that can be traced. Just focusing on this more medial line, and again, I'm, I remove all the irrelevant structures. We can see that this more medial line is actually referring to the lateral edge of the anterior wall. So this medial line is actually referring to the anterior wall. This also means that the more lateral line here is therefore referring to the posterior wall of the acetabulum, which is this. Last but not least, there is also one more line to be drawn in an AP view of the pelvis that does not relate to any of the columns of the walls, but it is actually this shape, which looks like a teardrop that can be seen medial to the proximal femoral head. And what this teardrop shape is actually referring to is actually this thin wall that forms the base of this acetabulum cavity. So if we're looking from that anterior direction, we are actually looking at this thin base of the acetabulum, which forms the teardrop. In addition to the usual AP view, other views important for acetabular fractures are the Jude views. The Jude views are basically the AP views, but rotated 45 degrees to either the right-hand side or the left-hand side. So using the right Jude view as an example, this right Jude view can be divided into two sub-views. On the right-hand side, which is the left pelvis, which in this case is further away from us because we are looking from the right-hand side, this further part of the pelvis is referred to as the oblique iliac view. You can remember this as the oblique iliac view because we can see a very large portion of the iliac bone very clearly, whereas the side of the pelvis that is closer to us, which is the right-hand side on this case, this is called the oblique obturator view because in this case, we can't see the ilium very well, but we can see the obturator foramen very well. Going back to the oblique iliac view, there are two main lines that we can, be, that we can draw. The first is the ilioischial line again, showing the posterior column of the left-hand side, which when I isolate the rest of the structures, is actually showing the posterior column. You may ignore the blue line. The other line that can be drawn on the oblique iliac view is the anterior wall for the acetabulum for the left side. Allow me to isolate the other structures again we can see that this blue line is outlining the lateral edge of this anterior wall, which is part of the anterior column. So this anterior wall right here. Now moving on to the closer oblique obturator view, we can outline the medial edge of the anterior column of the right-hand side, which after isolating the anterior column shows this part, the medial edge, also forming the pelvic inlet. And the final line on this oblique obturator view is the line for the posterior wall, which is hidden behind the femur, which is this line. So quick recap, on the Jude view, we can see four important lines. The first two being in the oblique iliac view, outlining the posterior column, the anterior wall, and on the oblique obturator view, the anterior column, and posterior wall. Just to give a real life example, this x-ray is a right Jude view showing the oblique iliac view and also the oblique obturator view. Unlike the AP view, we actually need to look at both sides of the Jude views because on this right Jude view, we can only visualize the posterior column on the left side of the pelvis. 
but if we want to examine the posterior column on the right side of the pelvis we have to swap to the left Judea view in order to be able to draw those lines so let's go through some examples to understand how to put those lines drawn earlier to practice starting with the AP view like let's start at the right hand side drawing the iliopectineal line it is smooth the ischial line is smooth as well the anterior wall is smooth and the posterior wall is smooth as well for the left hand side if we start drawing the iliac pectineal line it is smooth however when we draw the ischial line we can see that there is a sudden change in angle which is very sharp right here and as we go down further it appears to be smooth but at this point there is a lack of continuity of this lower part of the line with the pubic bone unlike the right side where it's a very smooth u-turn which suggests a fracture of the posterior column looking at the rest of the lines if we draw the anterior wall it appears to be smooth however we can't really identify the posterior wall except that in this model we can see that it is actually behind the anterior wall so the fact that it's moved suggests that the posterior column is moved because the posterior wall is actually part of the posterior column Looking at the right Jude view for a change, let's start with the oblique iliac view on the further side of the pelvis. We can see a very sharp angle here, indicating a fracture of the posterior column. The anterior wall is fine. And for the oblique obturator view, the anterior column appears to be smooth. And the posterior wall appears to be intact as well. So looking at this left Jude view, we can see that the posterior column doesn't seem to disrupt this nice line on the oblique iliac view and the anterior wall is smooth. In the closer oblique obturator view, this line representing the anterior column is not disrupted. However, the posterior wall seems to be displaced from the top of the acetabulum, suggesting that it has moved along with the posterior column. So let's have a look at what actually happened. Going to the model preview, we can see that there is a definite fracture in the posterior column as we can see it is no longer intact with the rest of the pelvis and has been displaced mainly medially and slightly rotated as well and using the lines that we drew earlier we can see that obviously the ilio ischial line is disrupted as i pointed out on the x-ray mode at this point which is a very sharp turn and also on the right jude view again there is a obvious disruption of the smooth line right here because if we compare the left-hand side to the right-hand side, the right-hand side is definitely smoother. And this is the same for the left Jude view, where the right-hand side can be drawn into a smooth contour. Now for the second example, let's draw those same lines again, starting from the AP view. The iliopectineal line is smooth. The ischial line is smooth. The anterior wall is smooth and flush with the rest of the pelvis and the posterior wall is smooth as well on the left hand side the iliopectineal line is smooth the ischial line this time is smooth as well however the anterior wall there is an obvious gapping between the anterior wall and the acetabulum shown here which means that a smooth line cannot be drawn along this side. The posterior wall seems to be fine though, in this case. Moving on to the right Jude view, uh, starting with the oblique iliac view, the posterior column appears to be intact. Again, the anterior wall has been disrupted, as seen here. The anterior column of this right side is fine and the posterior wall on this right side is fine as well on the left Jude view this posterior column is fine this anterior wall is fine as well the anterior column on the left pelvis is fine and the posterior wall is fine as well so there are no abnormalities in this view now to show you what the actual pathology looks like there is an obvious fracture as well as displacement of this fragment of the anterior wall, which explains why we couldn't draw the line very well. And that is the same for the Jude view, where there is a gap 
Okay, let's go through this final example as well. On the right hand side, the iliopectineal line is smooth. The ilioischial line is smooth. The anterior wall is smooth. But there is some gapping on the posterior wall with this gap right here. Therefore, when we try to draw the line of the posterior wall, we cannot have a nice continuous line. And there is also some stepping here, causing a sharp change in angle. On the left-hand side, if we try to draw the iliopectineal line, it is slightly disrupted. There is a tiny gap at the top part, as well as this sudden change in angle at this lower part. So it is disrupted. We can compare it with the right-hand side, which is normal, which shows a very different type of contour. If we keep checking the left-hand side as well, the ilioischial line is smooth. The anterior wall appears to be smooth. And the posterior wall appears to be smooth as well. Onto the right Jude view, the posterior column appears to be smooth. And the anterior wall appears to be smooth as well. The anterior column of this right-hand side is smooth. But we can see that the posterior wall is displaced because we can't draw that line. There is a gap and some steppage. So this is not a smooth line right here. Moving on to the left Jude view, drawing the same lines again. The posterior column of the right hand side is smooth. The anterior wall on the right hand side is smooth as well. But this time when we draw the anterior column of the left hand side, big stepping here, indicating a disruption of the bone contour. And the posterior line is smooth as well in this case. So to show you what the actual model looks like, let's have a look. Here, there is a fracture of the anterior column of the left-hand side, causing this steppage, as we can see here. This part is quite obvious up here, but this is not always visible on the x-ray, and it is not reliable. But if we look at the lines that we normally draw, there is an obvious displacement right here. We can see an obvious disruption up here, and disruption down here as well. Which, when we compare to the normal side, looks quite different because the right side is very smooth whereas we have one big stepping here and a gapping here. The other pathology we identified is the posterior wall on the right hand side which is actually here and it is again fractured and obviously displaced from the rest of the acetabulum. If I just hide this right femur and try to imitate a view of the x-ray as well as this side we can see very smooth on the left side no problems here right side big gap right here forming this triangle and another gap over here so in this third example we have a fracture of the left anterior column as well as the right posterior wall that's the end of the video i hope you can now appreciate the anatomy of the acetabulum better as well as understanding these key terms thank you for watching